Electricity free today. So we all get to be here today in our naturalist fire, sweating. But this is a good opportunity for me to remind you and to speak a little bit about this uh, inquiry that we can do around circumstances and events that are taking place, whether they're small ones like this or larger ones. When you can ask yourself, how can I use this? So today, as an example, some of you, as the time goes on today, will start to experience a little bit of discomfort in the heat. You may already be experiencing that. You don't like so much this feeling of sweating and being sticky and wet. But this is also a good opportunity just to look at the way that your mind has a tendency to react. <coughs> Not respond. You know, responding is you are too hot so you take off some clothing. Or you go to a cooler space. This is responding. Reacting says, oh, I don't like this. This is horrible. Oh, I don't want this. I need the AC. I cannot survive this. I am so uncomfortable. But for those of us that are sadaks and that are practicing this way of self-recognition, it's better for us to ask the question, how can I use this? Whatever this is, whatever the circumstance is, in this case with the heat or with the cold, because both things are causing reactions within people, we can notice when the mind reacts to the heat and starts to go on to this dialogue about how uncomfortable I am. And we start praying to our Anatula that the fans will come back on. <laughs> But we can also asking how can I use this 
uncomfortableness, this temporary passing circumstance. We can also look into the mind and see that reactivity is there and then use that reactivity to turn further inward by asking the question, what is thinking this thought? What is aware of this? Is there something, while noticing the reactivity of the mind, is aware that it is unmoved? Can we find this place? Where even though the mind or the emotions may be having some reactive some reaction to the environment, or to the circumstances. We place our attention or make the effort to place our attention on what doesn't move. That which is unmoved, even as we sit here sweating. This is an important question, this question. What is aware of this? Simply because what we've done as spiritual practitioners, as sadaks, is we've begun the process of shedding. First we shed the place that we are from, the life we had in the past. We begin to look more and more toward the source. What is it that's aware? But along with this, for many of us, comes this letting go of material things and coming somewhere foreign, somewhere that we don't feel familiar. And so this process causes us to confront all sorts of reactivity that comes from conditioning in the mind. So it becomes very, very useful to be able to remember this question. What is aware of this? How can I use this? Whatever this is in the moment. How can I use this to further this letting go of a personal identity? Over the years that I've been here, which is about 12 or 14 now, coming and going and sometimes staying for long periods of time, I've seen many, many people come here with the determination to stay for a year or two or longer and spend the whole first year setting the circumstances in which they live up so that it will be exactly like the place they left. <laughs> So the furniture becomes, necessarily has to become very comfortable. <laughs> there has to be an AC in each room. Some have to buy an AC auto. And all of this is coming, speaking to them, all of this is coming out of a sense that I am this body, and I am this mind, but principally I am this body, so the very first thing I have to do is make the body comfortable. Missing the opportunity to simply ask what is reacting to the change in circumstances and feeling the need to replace the circumstances I left with circumstances which are similar so that I will feel comfortable, safe, unburdened by the fact that I've come from a cold climate and now I'm in the tropics, close to the equator. But I still need 58 degrees at night to sleep. So some of you know you've done this in some way. And others of you know people who have done this. But I want to remind you that to become 
engaged in the inquiry is to ask yourself, what can this me let go of now? Not because what we're interested in doing is getting rid of things or proving how strong we are as an ascetic, but rather to ask ourselves, do I really need this to know who I am? And if the answer is no, then we simply let it go. And we sweat. If it's hot. When I came here the first time in 2007, there was no air conditioning here. It was not so long ago, eh? Now we go everywhere and almost all of the guest houses have AC. And, but in those days, there wasn't AC. And even when there was AC, if you happened to find a flat or a small cottage or something that had AC in it, the power was on for an average of about six hours a day. So people were so excited they were moving to a flat where there was AC. <laughs> and they found that they couldn't use it most of the time. <laughs> And people were spending 20, 30, 40,000 rupees to have AC put into their flat, only to realize after <laughs> that if they were lucky, the power would be on for six or seven hours a day. And it wasn't you could go and sit in your AC because the power was on from 10 in the morning until 2 in the afternoon. The power was on for an hour and off for four hours, and on for two hours, and off for eight hours, and on for three hours, and off for four hours. So you never knew, so it became really useless. Since then, of course, circumstances have changed here. There's a lot more power, although, you see, we still have this opportunity <laughs> to sit and sweat in the natural environment of Tiruvannamalai in South India. So when I say, ask yourself when the circumstances become difficult for you, whether it's physically or mentally, emotionally, or some other way, financially, ask yourself, how can I use this? Then you are doing this inquiry, which is always looking back away from the phenomenon themselves, right? From whatever is present in your life, moment to moment. And always taking whatever's there as a bell of mindfulness like you might hear in a monastery. Not the kind of mindfulness bell that we hear in the temples here where the bell goes clang, 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 clang. This bell is for a different purpose. <laughs> well, a while arti or some ceremony is going on, but just a simple bell of mindfulness, boom. Just ding, to remind us to turn back inward. To recognize that awareness which you are, which is unmoved by any phenomenon or the circumstances in which you currently find yourself. And again, I want to remind you, I'm not talking about not responding to circumstances as they are, but rather, before you respond in some way, go into doing mode, and go spend thirty thousand dollars on an air conditioner you can't use, thirty thousand rupees on an air conditioner you can't use. You can ask yourself what is reacting here. To notice this reaction. Then if you make a decision to do something, to put some clothes on if you're cold, take some clothes off, take a shower to cool down, if you decide to take some action in that way. Your action is coming out of a more heart-centered place. It's coming out of a more mm, relational place. So you are actually relating from your own being to whatever the environment is, being kind to the body, kind to the mind. You are not reacting out of negativity, out of hatred. 
And slowly, by doing this with small things like power outages, you learn to do this when you're talking to someone that is a difficult person for you. As the mind begins to react to a conversation or a relationship or an event that happened in your relationship with someone in the past, before reacting, and thereby causing this difficulty which you might have had with someone in the past to continue, first you ask, how can I use this? So you're there quietly until you have centered in the heart and now you can be fully present with the circumstances as they are. And now your response is not a reaction. It's a response. And typically you know it's a response because you can feel a lessening of tension throughout the body and in the mind. You might say you can feel the heart open a little bit more. Because it, all of you know that when you go into a reactive mode, that what's happening is there's a closing down that's happening. It happens very quickly, doesn't it? Especially if you don't catch it. It happens very quickly. And then it's like you're standing in front of the someone that you would really like to open your heart to or that you would really like to finish the difficulty in your relationship, but you realize that you are there like a clenched fist. And the longer you stand there, the more pain you get in your hand if you keep that fist clenched. Even though you might know that the only thing you can do is open. You still clench out of conditioning and out of reactivity and the, in, the level of pain that you feel continues to increase. So by saying to yourself, what is aware of this? Or using the question, who am I? Or asking, how can I use this? And giving yourself that moment, you're able to be there long enough to see if something else wants to manifest at that moment, if something else in the relationship wants to happen that isn't based on conditioning, on what you're anticipating is going to happen. It's not based in the resistance. It's not based in the fear of what you're afraid of. You're just there as space and awareness, waiting for what wants to come next. You know, of course, for this to really be something that takes root in you, you have to be willing at that moment also to let go of whatever defensiveness you might have. So it doesn't matter whether we're talking about the heat and the sweat and the, the, the uncomfortable body. Um, you know, most of the reactions that come toward that are some defensive characteristic that we have. We have a fear that we can't, we will completely melt into a puddle on the floor or that will come to heat stroke or something like that. So you can look and see these fears are rising and they prevent us from really responding to the situation in an effective way. The same is true in our personal relationships. It's also true in our uh, inquiry practice when we are just sitting alone. And then we can notice that what's happening as we just sit here quietly some tension comes to the mind and then comes to the body. We might not notice it until it comes to the body and have to backtrack a little bit to look in the mind and see where it came from. But all the tension that comes in the body originates in the mind with some thought, conditioning, or characteristic from our past. So that's always the origin of it. The reactivity, that is. And so we want to be able to put that down as quickly as possible in some way to be able to be here and then to make 
a choice to, do, to either respond or to do nothing. Because remember, doing nothing is also a choice. And for us as sadaks, as people who are practicing in this way, often the third choice, the choice to do nothing, rather than to do something, positive or do something reactive, or actor, acting out of a triggered way, the, the other choice is to do nothing and just to wait here, now, and see what wants to unfold. And of course this will trigger our fear that if we just stay here that we won't be able to deal with whatever comes up. So don't be afraid of what is fresh and new and unknown to you. It's in being willing to be with what is unknown to you that the end of reactivity can come and does come. Before long you come to realize that you really don't need to react to anything, that there isn't much left in you that wants to react to anything, that you much prefer to remain here now, just aware of what is happening moment by moment by moment throughout every day, not so interested in the conditioning and the reactivity of what you used to know as your mind. There's a simple losing interest in it. Because there is so much relaxation and joy in just being here, with a sense of wonder coming out of not knowing. I wonder what will happen now. I wonder what this person will say. I wonder what this circumstance will bring. So you become an adventurer in your own life, but one who is adventuring without attachment, without needing to become something or have a particular outcome happen. Just waiting. When this way of being becomes very strong in you, this is the place, this is the time that grace has the opportunity to just open you completely and show you that you are that which is aware. You are before all phenomena. You exist completely here, now, as being, consciousness. You are that. Everything else is the joyful flowing of the river of being, the river of life. And you are fully immersed in that, unafraid, knowing yourself as being consciousness.
All right, who has something? Anyone? I think this microphone is still working yeah. off of the battery. Yeah, this has a battery attached to it. So. Um, my question is, you mentioned several times now waiting for what's going to evolve, what's going to unfold. I find this waiting, like a position of waiting, so uncomfortable. It's uncomfortable, like, yes. It's like, it's more like, it feels much more in peace, comfortable when I'm when I'm just letting it happen, what is, what is unfolding, and not waiting for anything to unfold. Yes. Because I think, that, I have a feeling that the flow of life is not waiting for anything. Yes, that's but, absolutely So what's your position? <laughs> yes. So when I say waiting in this way, I'm talking about a particular practice that's related to a particular type of mind which does not wait, it just reacts, and, and has begun to notice <coughs> that that tendency to react is what actually causes a lot of difficulty for that person in their life. Because they're not responding. You know, they're not just responding in the moment, like you say, spontaneously, as life is flowing. They're actually reacting from the mind, from the past, from the conditioning. And so this is just a simple technique for that person to be able to, in some way, train themselves to grab that reactivity internally before it spreads out into the world and now they have to deal with all the fallout of their reactivity right? at work, at home, with partner, with family and all the ill will and all the difficulty that comes from that and have to spend a long time correcting. This is a common experience for people. So this is what I'm referring to when I'm talking about that. Yes, you're absolutely right that from the perspective of the ultimate, there's nothing to wait for. So this is a technique of grasping a hold of the mind that wants to. So if that doesn't occur for you, wonderful. Just go ahead. Awakening also can lead to something like becoming bored or boredom, which is very uncomfortable, like super uncomfortable. Really. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes, but this is also the prime opportunity to ask, what is aware of boredom? Because for most of us, when boredom starts to set in, there is a reaction. You just described it. Boredom sets in, and you're, the reason you're saying that is because there's a, an opinion or a, an experience even that's around, and I don't like this. It's not, oh, here is boredom, do nothing. It's like, oh, here is boredom, and now I must, right? Do something, yeah. Yeah, I must go for a walk, I must go have a chai, I must pick up my computer, I must look at my phone. I must go to Tiruvannamalai. <laughs> you know? So, uh, what is missed in all of these circumstances is the opportunity to ask the question, what is aware of boredom? This is the way toward the source. Right? Once we've asked this question, what is aware of this, and we have some glimmer about what that may be, well, we may still say, oh, okay, fine. Now I'm going to Tiruvannamalai, <laughs> right? But we're not doing it to alleviate the boredom. We're not doing it out of a sense of reactivity, which is unexamined. We're not questioning the spontaneity of living, the spontaneity of life itself. What we're questioning is the way in which the, the mind through conditioning covers that up, that spontaneity, stops the free flow of life within us 
and makes us always want to control the direction of things in, in a way that we think will lead us toward happiness or free us from suffering. So always remember that, as he's pointing out, the final <coughs> teaching that Sri Ramana encouraged us toward was simply, remain as you are. And he said, who you are is the self. And the description he used for the self most often was silence. So if anything ever comes for you, there's ever any doubt about what you should be doing as someone who's engaged in inquiry. Always go back to that instruction. Keep quiet. First, of course, we keep quiet with the voice. We keep quiet by not reacting verbally to the world around us. But then we have to look deeper than that for this quiet. So then we look into the mind when there's reactivity there, and we say, keep quiet. If you are able to, very simply, you can say to the mind, please go sit in the corner. Why can that happen? Because you know that you are the one who is aware of the thoughts. You are not the thoughts themselves. So if you know, if you have reached that place in your inquiry, in your observation, in your witnessing, that you know that you are not the mind either, that thoughts come and go in the mind, then whenever they're there, and especially if they're troubling you, you can simply say, go sit in the corner. Mind will listen. It follows instruction quite well, especially if you become good at doing this and you do this for some time. The mind will simply go away. Maybe it'll go away only for a second, but eventually it will go away for longer periods of time because it knows that your attention is occupied elsewhere, on the self, in the silence, in some way. But eventually, finally, with great relief, <laughs> you come to this place <laughs> where you simply don't feed mind with attention. <coughs> and slowly mind gets quieter and quieter and quieter. And you may not even notice that the mind is not talking to you much anymore. You will just get quieter and quieter. And then when something comes, you won't have this tendency to react to it. You will just be here, as you are, as silence. And everything will dance around. Ajashanti says, then you will be emptiness dancing. Before you are mind dancing, now you are emptiness dancing. And I like this. This is very good.
So also, I want to say, you know, this attitude of waiting that I mentioned? <coughs> this attitude of waiting is really not about you waiting. What you talk about in terms of, what you mentioned in terms of boredom coming up, this is the indicator that you are waiting. Now you are bored. If you set aside you, knowing there is no you, if you have this strong recognition, this strong faith, if you will, that there is no me, this is what all the sages have said for thousands of years, there is no me. So if you are always aware of that, anytime something comes up, there is a me that is waiting, there is a me that is bored, this recognition can come very quickly and very directly. There is no you. This one that you are referring to simply doesn't exist. So now, you may find that the waiting I'm talking about in that circumstance is quite natural. It's happening on its own. It's the lack of interest in anything. Things can come and go, they can be noticed. They can be appreciated, they can even be enjoyed. But there's no interest in grabbing them or clinging to them or keeping them. And so, consequently, when an empty mind comes, there's no clinging to an empty mind. There's no clinging to boredom when it comes. There can be a recognition, this is emptiness. There can be a recognition, this is boredom. Even there can be the thought, now what? But if there's no tendency to grasp toward whatever rises after that experience of spontaneity, and after that experience of just being here as awareness itself, if nothing rises, good, then the, what can be felt, what can be experienced in some way is a sense that uh, <coughs> I am just here. And even this I isn't important. There is only here-ness, only now-ness, only suchness, only awareing. That is all. And with this can come a flood of joy. Now whatever comes, there's an appropriate response or not. And it's all okay. Always what we are doing with the inquiry is examining the sense of you the sense of me, the sense of mind, and being willing to put it down. If we can see where the root of it comes from, not that we need to, but sometimes this comes quite naturally. A particular kind of clinging will come, and right along behind it, if we say, I'm not clinging anymore, put that down, let it go, or don't do anything, just be there, noticing that something has come, but not taking a great deal of interest in it, then right behind it can come the conditioning that led to that moment of arising. And if we see that, then that conditioning is gone. It's either undercut very big, in a very big way, so that it just comes, maybe it returns another time, another two times in a small way, but there's no reactivity. We let it go. Eventually these things don't rise anymore. And this is the, uh, the impact of the inquiry is that the things that have compelled us to act, to operate in some way in our life, become inactive. And now life can flow through this body-mind, unimpeded by you.
so I want to read about something which happened uh, uh, last Monday uh, in, in, with you. So I was in this uh, uh, state of being aware with things happening inside, including me, this, this me. And uh, suddenly you, you said, I don't know what you were talking about, but uh, you, 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 I heard that uh, uh, what remains when you are dead, after you, you, you left the body. Yes. And then I was here being awareness, and something really uh, peculiar happened. It, it's like uh, this field of awareness, which was just like a skin before, uh, uh, and, and, and still connected with, with, with me here. And, yes. Uh, became thicker and, and richer and, 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 uh, and there were a kind of shift, uh, just like a shift of perspective. And instead of being here, aware of that, I became that. The, the perspective became from, yes. from that. Yes. And then uh, um, as I look at here, uh, there were a kind of uh, 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 dissolution of, of you no, know, from that, uh, I, I noticed that I was a bit tight in my holding to, to, to that from yes. here. Yes. And then uh, noticing it, I, I, something relaxed, uh, and then there was this kind of melting of, of this thing, which became absolutely as unimportant as not more uh, uh, special than any other folk. And, uh, and, and then it was, uh, it was, it was something. And uh, and then I've been here. Yeah, I've been playing with this this this, uh, this past two days. Like um, and uh, uh, when I got stuck, not got stuck, but wh when I am feeling my awareness from here, like you know, organizing dentist appointments oh, yes. and this kind of thing. So, uh, when I, when it sticks, uh, I can go back to my heart and quiet and down, and, and then from this place I can go into this, uh, this uh, awareness of, of, of the whole world. Really. Yes. And then it happens or not that something shifts again and, and, and I, uh, I just, it, became, it becomes only that and, 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 and existence be, becomes uh, uh, very uh, skinny in substance, really, uh, very far and, and skinny. Uh, And, and what I notice as well is in, in this mid state, like um, um, being that awareness, there is nothing happening here. And yes. in, in, in the mid state between me here and that, which is, uh, there is this uh, um, sense of being aware. And here on that level, like there is joy and there is thing happening, there is a, a kind of of feeling, a kind of fullness of, of experimenting, you know, trees, love, whatever. So I can see it's a bit linear as, as a description, but I can, I can really yes. play with these three different uh, uh, states of the world. Yes, very nice, beautiful. Anything you can uh, uh, say or advise? Well, the thing that really stood out to me more than anything else is that she said, from this place of absolute awareness or pristine awareness, she recognized herself to just be a point like any other point. Is what you said? This is very beautiful. Now, somehow, I don't know, but it seems like the way you are describing it, there is still some play in this, right? Up, down. You you describe this. Yeah, lovely. Yeah. What is aware includes everything, so it becomes possible to see all the aspects of the way that this particular point in space uh, acts and in, interacts with the world, with the thoughts that come and go, with uh, the job, whatever. You know, it becomes possible to see that. But it sounds like what you're saying is now you know you are firmly that which is aware. It doesn't make any difference whether you're aware of this individual point or you're aware of the totality of consciousness. It makes no difference. 
makes no difference. Makes no difference. I, I, I still feel that like a different location in space. Yes, I understand. But now, remember what I said to you last week also though? I said to you, yes, but from that place where you, what you're calling a different point in space right now, as different from the point in space which is this body-mind, I said, yes, but when, as you recognize that awareness is what you are, let that expand outward continuously. So in some way you are still doing this checking. You are still in some way looking back toward the, the point of reference which is this body, this mind, this life. But that's absolutely not necessary. So say again, please, uh, what you just said. It's not necessary. No, before, but this ever-expanding... Uh, yes, from the place of awareness itself, of, or pristine awareness, there can also be this recognition that this awareness is just expanding infinitely. So like the universe and the Big Bang, it just keeps going. So the state is, uh, of the pristine awareness is not a nothingness space, even though I experiment it like well, this now. What, yeah, what we know from science is that, that what we in the past called the nothing of space is actually not nothing. That there, is, there are objects in space and in between what we call nothing. But now science knows that the in-between spaces are full of black ma uh, dark matter. And so now they realize that space and the objects in space are a continuous uh, manifestation of some sort, a solid mass of manifestation. So what I am also saying about awareness in this circumstance is that awareness or consciousness itself is a solid mass. You are still experiencing it as this big picture and some smaller picture which is a point in space or in time where this body-mind exists. So, I'm just pointing out to you that this is a solid mass of consciousness all the way from vastness, from space, from emptiness to a particular point or a particular emotion or a particular thought related to this particular body. But in truth, this is a solid mass of consciousness. There is no separation. So what I'm pointing out to you is that what you're still experiencing as levels and stages, if you, if you come to the recognition that consciousness or awareness itself is ever expanding, you can also lose the frame of reference of this body. You can lose the frame of reference of this mind. You can lose the frame of reference of going to a larger or more expanded awareness. And you can come to realize that all of this is consciousness itself, ever present, here now. And I don't even need to say, and I am that. There is only this recognition that all of this is consciousness. Now there is a unity which is happening. There is no place where there is any form of separation or leveling happening. That's very clear. Thank you. Yeah. And so the way to get to, the, to understand that you are that which is aware and you are consciousness alone and all of this is awareness and consciousness itself is just to come to recognize when the mind is playing this game of going up and down the levels that you're talking about, that this is also just something that the mind is doing. It's a, this is a, a this, this has the taste of a sweetie, yeah. So this taste of seeing these pieces for a while, it looks very entertaining, it looks very interesting. But eventually it will just settle into, this is all. And all of this is consciousness itself. With the, with the ability of tracking inside of, of that. With? With, with the ability just, uh, to, move, to, to, uh, to move inside of, of, of the whole of it. Um, no. No? With the recognition, I am the self. Now where is there to move? I am all of this. There is nowhere to move. Everything is here now. 
This is a very subtle way of still playing with the eye. And you can go on that way if you wish to for some time. But be aware that the danger in that is that you create a, just a more subtle sense of eye. It's now based in this cosmic awareness. Yes? Even this is unnecessary. You are the self. Absolute. Here, now, pristine. In need of nothing, going nowhere. And still it will look from, you know, it, it will look from the outside. People will still say, oh, you are doing this, or you are doing that, or you said this, or you said that. But you will know that this, uh, this you is false. This is just a, um, it's just a nicety between people. Designate this individual from that individual. But this you doesn't exist. All that exists is consciousness itself. Yes, I understand what you said. It, I, I just want to, to, to bring out that it seems that still, uh, 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 it, it seems like there is an individuation, uh, 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 of an individuation of consciousness between. Uh, oh, and between. Yes, yes, and this is the foundation of the question, who am I? Because the individuation is the thought rising, I. So, that's why I say, understand that yes, what you're doing is, this appears to be so at the moment, but this is just the manipulation that's still going on within mind of the subtle I, right? Is this kind of recognition that there are these, there is the all and there is the individuation. Yes, this is true. From the position of an I. Not an I am even, just I, I. So this is the very first thing that can be experienced in body-mind, is this recognition, I. Right? But if you go no further than this I, if you simply wait, if you are there as I, with no thought for what comes next, not am, not this, not that, mm. not mind, not feeling, not individuation, if there's no thought for that, if you are simply I, 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 if this is your direct experience, then what happens is everything just collapses into I, I, and this is what we interpret to be pristine awareness, we experience in the body-mind as absolute awareness, and consciousness is that which is even before that, which is the unifying factor. And that's why I say it becomes obvious from this position of I, I, that there is only this solid mass of consciousness, and this solid mass of consciousness recognizes itself. It does, it can recognize the I now, Yes, it can recognize all the individual points of I within itself, no problem. But you will lose interest in that individual point of I, and eventually you lose interest in supporting the idea that there are individual points of I here. There is only the all. But the, the individual point of, of, of awareness, I'm not talking about uh, uh, us here. Yes. I'm talking about this uh, I, I, which seems to me, even if it's unified with, uh, with the whole and with everyone, it seems to me there is still a, a, a like, uh, is my I, I, yes, and yes, yes, of course, of I course. And this, and this will continue to go on as long as the body-mind continues to live. Right, because it's associated with the body mind. This I I is not associated with consciousness itself or pristine awareness. Right, this I I is associated with the manifestation of body mind. This is the way that the self can experience itself as it manifests as body mind, loses itself in the individuation, and then at some point says, "Wait, I remember not." This is not happening in the mind. Wait, I remember 
my, my purpose is to turn back toward the source. So we come back to this I, I. We will have always, as long as there's the body, we will have some sense of the body. As long as there's mind, we can have some sense of the mind. But Sri Ramana and other sages were famous for sitting for long periods of time, even in great pain and so on, and doctors saying, I don't know how he can do that. Do you remember when Ramana Bhagavan had cancer for so many years? And the doctors would say, I don't know how he can do that. He just sits there in bliss quietly all day, every day. And this we know from experience with other bodies that he must be in tremendous pain. And he never takes any pain medication. He doesn't want it. He just reads it. Because his association with this I, I that you're speaking about was so thin at that time that he knew that, you know, there was pain in the body and sometimes he would ask someone, you know, to massage his legs or something like that. So he knew that there was this I-I circumstance there and that that was related to the aging and, you know, eventual dying of the body. But he was unmoved by that. And then, so this is what I'm pointing to. So yes, both of those things are possible. There is something I would I'd like to clarify, which is that, yes, we are all aware this and that one level there is their body <clears throat> and their individual point, and yet each individual point or like awareness is expressing itself differently. Awareness is, <laughs> awareness is expressing awareness. itself differently yeah. through each. Yeah physical body. Yes. So there is there is something I'm not trying to fight for the small self, I'm not trying to fight for the individual. But there is some individuation of expression. Yes. But yeah. is this me or is it life itself? Yes, it's life itself. Life itself which is devoid of me. Expressing itself individually yes. expressing yes. itself in an yes. individual way. Yes. Which is where Absolutely. The and all the difficulty though that we experience in life or all the difficulty that is experienced in the world, you know, war and all of that, is a consequence of this belief that what is expressing itself is me. And so I have to get my way, I have to have it my way, I have to defend my way. But in truth, what you come to understand when you're standing in the position that we're talking about here is that this is life itself. Now I have nothing to defend, nothing to give. I'm simply here. But there is something subtle in this, isn't there? Because nevertheless, we are all expressing differently in tune with the self. We are all expressing Yeah, the question is not that there are different expressions. The question is whether we are expressing differently or whether life itself is expressing differently. Okay. I think that's where confusion comes sometimes in terms of the I, me, Yeah, the and also I. where fear comes from, because it, you know, it really is the recognition that if I, um, if I completely lose this me-ness, this my-ness, this I-ness, if I completely lose this, um, you know, ego or thoughts or emotion or whatever you want to call it, this, this previous self-expression that was happening, it knows very clearly its life is over. And so this is a tremendous fear. Not everyone uh, is willing to do that and just to allow the life that wants to come. This is, I've said this before, this is like stepping off a cliff. Right? Most of us want to keep walking on firm ground. <coughs> this is the I, me, mine. This is the, what feels like firm ground. But when we start talking about the self as the absolute or as pure awareness, now, there has to be a surrender of this desire to walk on firm ground all the time. So we move into not knowing, into uncertainty. This is like stepping off a cliff and knowing that we are just going to be in free fall. And we have no idea where that will take us. For one person, that will take us to a cave somewhere in a mountain, somewhere in the world. For another person, that will take us to sitting at the, on the chair in satsang and answering questions. For another person, it will lead us into uh, fantastic wealth and having to manage all of that and deal with all of that that comes with that. But for all of those beings, 
the experience is there is only awareness itself. There is not me doing this. So I build a big hospital or I feed all the sadhus on the road or, you know, whatever. I don't, it does, there's not me doing this. There's this very clear recognition that this is life doing this. And it leads people to unexpected places, to lives, lives that they did not expect. Lives. You were saying that um, all of these things are happening and there's no attachment to that. But um, my experience is there's also a lot, of, there's a lot of joy in feeling that sense of life moving through. Yes. Not, not attachment, but just this sense of joy yeah. in the moment to be a bit, a bit moving through. Yeah. So it is still moving yeah. through this. Yes. This, this, yes. This, this Absolutely. Of the body. Yes. And so when you're in that position, then you are just dancing the joy of being, though, right? You can notice in your own experience. I'm sure you have that as soon as you begin to dance from me from mine, or from the desire to hold on to this joyful moment and make it last as long as possible, that it begins to diminish right away. It's when we dance in joy which is unfettered by me, mine, or any kind of grasping, that this joy can go on eternally. So again, it's always about what is the point of reference. Is it life itself which is joyful? Or is it me which is trying to get joy, keep joy, have joy, and create joy? Because you're absolutely right. When, when there is freedom from all of that me and mine, then what happens is joy just flows through us. And we dance whatever dance is ordained for this life. So if you know you are that, just keep dancing. And don't worry about anything else. For most of us, what happens is that we, even when we come to this kind of realization, there is still, just over time, we notice that there are doubts creeping back in. For a moment, we realize that we are that which is aware, that we are that which is joyful life itself. And we know that. And then somehow we begin to relate to ourselves as if, we, as if we are that individualized point of light again. And then we begin to contract around that point of awareness again. And pretty soon we're not dancing in the joy of being life itself. We are dancing, trying to reclaim that joy through being a someone, going somewhere, doing something, and achieving something as a consequence. <clears throat> the, the subtlety or the complexity of it is that we are, at one level, we are physically in a material body and so the potential to re-identify with that, it, it can see... Yes, that so potential is there and this is what I'm calling doubt. And, and, and when this doubt is resolved, um, if you ever experience this in, you're in this joyful state that you're talking about and there's this experience of re-entering the meanness of your own life, then this is what I'm referring to as doubt. And the reason I'm calling it doubt is because it's doubt that you are the self and have no need of the meanness anymore. So the, the meanness, the I-ness, the mindness is returning to what is familiar to it. It is not expanding out like I was saying to her, is not expanding out infinitely. It is somehow saying, I don't know what's there, or that's not enough, or I, or I don't completely get that, so I better return to the safety of me, mine, and this ex individual expression. Whereas the sages make it very clear that when that is finished, the last thing that goes is doubt. And it's not the doubt related to the body, it's the doubt that says I am, that's related to me not being the self, and that doubt goes. And then there's this recognition, I am the self under all conditions, so now what? Now I am simply here. I will dance when I dance and don't dance when I don't dance. It's like, so what?
uh, so in that there is no preference, of course, and, and, and it includes everything, like pain and everything. It's, it's, I was just uh, uh, watching that right now, and it, it's, uh, it's, um, it's awesome, and it's terrible at the same time. It includes all, everything, all the beauty and all the suffering uh, uh, as well. So the question I'm asking now, is there a kind of a growing of a kind of awareness muscle which allow to hold this quietly? I could feel the immensity of pain suddenly. And, uh, and, uh, yeah, because in a way you can say what's happening is that the same way that we've reconditioned ourselves to avoid pain and so on in the past, now we are in a way not exactly the same, but we are, in a way, conditioning non-reactivity, conditioning being here now, conditioning this recognition that not knowing is great. You know? So it is like strengthening a muscle, where before we have reacted in certain ways and we have tried to either make that a positive or a negative or to get rid of that, now we are simply saying all of this is the self. And still for many years, some, some you, you can talk, I will tell you that for many years there are still some small things that are being reacted to in the body-mind, but there really isn't any interest in going into the stories around that. There's just a recognition that some something has come and there was a tendency in the mind to react to that. But because the, the, the final, if you can say, practice is to remain as you are, to keep quiet, to, to turn towards silence under all circumstances, then this, is, this becomes the strengthening, as you're calling it, of the muscle of awareness. And it does feel that way, it does express itself that way, even though we know that consciousness itself, it doesn't need any strengthening. Or, it is the mind which is engaging in this process, but yeah. We keep working with it on more and more subtle ways. Almost all of the sages have talked about their initial awakening um, requiring some period of time. Most common you hear things like six years, ten years, four years, where there has been a recognition of who you are, who I am, and then there's a deep silence that rises, and in that period of time there are still tendencies rising. Because as you've heard me say many times before, when you have a moment of deep intuition, here or somewhere else, one of the things that sidetracks many people very quickly is the recognition that within the next hour or the next day, some big thing that they thought they were done with in their past comes up. And then there's this turning of attention directly toward that and away from the realization that they had, you know, this an hour before, or a day before, or a week before, or a month before. And I'm always reminding you that until the final doubt is gone, and you know I am the self, and the doubt is gone, what you see following an intuition that you are the self even a deep one, is some form of samskara or conditioning, which is not coming because you are to turn back to it and become it again and figure out, understand it and resolve it and get rid of it, but it's coming just to show you that this is what needs to leave and this is what is leaving. So there again, the instruction is, keep quiet. Don't react. Just know this is the samskara. <laughs> This is a tendency, and I am no longer interested in that. So this is the way forward from there. Okay. Okay. Very good.
I'm very happy to see the depth from which some of the questions today are coming. Very good. In some way, it reaffirms for me that this is a satsang of people who are serious about what we're doing here in some way. Not for people who are just wanting to skim over the surface and have a momentary high or a momentary fix. This is a place now where people are coming, where you all are coming. Because of your commitment to realizing I am the self. And I will look at all of these questions of inquiry and at all of these fine details with an earnestness and a persistence until I know I am the Self. Jamahe Sugandhim Pushti Vardhanam Urva Rukhami Bhavandhinam Richor Mukshi Amamritava Svaha Uva Bhu Om Sat Jum Om Thank you.